Hello Rocket Builders! One of the features of this channel is going to be following along as I take on complicated builds. I figured I'd start by introducing you to my current long-term build, a 122nd scale model of the Saturn 1B. And yes, it flies. Most of you already know about the Saturn V. This is the rocket that took Ben to the moon. But there was more to the Saturn series of rockets than the Saturn V. While the full evolution of the US space program is well beyond the scope of this channel, I can give you a very quick overview. If you want to know more, I highly recommend that you check out the Vintage Space Channel. Check the link in the description below. The first Saturn was the Saturn I. While there were parts that would eventually be used in the Saturn V already under development, there was an immediate need for a heavy launch vehicle capable of putting large payloads in orbit. The Saturn I was designed to be a quick development of existing technologies. It made minor developments to the motors used by the Thor and Jupiter missiles to make the H1 motor. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of the Saturn I and later Saturn IIbs were the fuel tanks. These were modified versions of the Redstone and Jupiter missiles, which helped keep costs low and development time short. The Saturn I SA-5 mission became the first of the series to use the S-4 second stage and the first of the series to achieve orbit. With the success of the Saturn I series came the Saturn IIb. This was also known initially as the upgraded Saturn I and in many ways it is exactly that. It was an improved and more powerful version of the Saturn I that became the testbed for the Apollo program. Some of the early missions included unmanned tests of components of the Apollo system, including the command and service module. It was also used to test docking maneuvers with the lunar excursion module, resulting in some critical design changes before it flew to the moon with the Saturn V. The biggest achievement of the Saturn 1B series occurred with mission SA-205. This was the first manned flight of the Apollo spacecraft. After that, the Saturn 1B became the orbital workhorse of the manned space program. When all you had to do was place men in orbit, it was a much more economical solution than using the larger Saturn V. It was used for three Skylab missions, with one on standby, as well as the first cooperation with the Soviets in space, the Apollo-Soyuz test program. Four more were built, but never flown. The Saturn 4B upper stage was also used for the Saturn V and a modified version of this became Skylab. After completing my level 3, I was looking for new challenges. I had many ideas, including working on some significantly less expensive low-power models. There are still a lot of challenges there that can be done in the $10 to $50 range, and they develop skills that can be used on larger projects. I'd even begun looking at an electronics-based project that I will continue with, but that will be the subject of another series, so why kill the suspense? So there I was one day perusing through the many exciting posts on the Rocketry Forum when I came across a scratch build project by a user with the handle MaxQ. He had been in the store when he came across some cardboard mailer tubes that looked a lot like Saturn 1B lower stage tanks. He began to build. This was big. Here was a project that would introduce a whole new set of challenges way beyond anything I'd ever done before. As we both got into our builds, Max Q and I communicated frequently and wound up learning from each other. From a similar starting point, we took very different approaches to the builds. If you find mine interesting, I highly recommend reading his build thread as well. With any project this size, life has a way of interfering. I have a day job. For most of this build, I was traveling intercontinentally about once a month, so I was home for two to three weeks and away for two to three weeks. Throw in some jet lag for good measure. Build progress went in spurts. This wasn't all bad. For one, the expense gets to be spread out over a greater period of time. Make no mistake, a project like this will always be more expensive than your first thought. I was able to use my evenings on the road to do some of the 3D CAD work for the 3D printed parts you'll see later in the build. But perhaps the most surprising benefit of all this was time. I would leave home in the middle of an important aspect of the build, after a couple of weeks with nothing to do but think about the build, I came home with an entirely new approach to a problem. This paid dividends time and time again.
As this video is being produced, the project is still not finished. It has flown once, but with a lot of missing details. The single flight verified the design, but also highlighted some serious flaws. Correcting those flaws will also factor into this series. Now that the stage is set, we can begin looking at the build. In the next video, we'll look at planning. There are quite a lot of things that have to be done before you can start gluing components together. Till then, happy flying! There we go.